I'm Dave Rowley, I'm the Education Programme Director for the Bloodhound SSC Education Programme. My role is running an education programme for Bloodhound. Bloodhound is an attempt at the world land speed record, but it is unique in that we can share all the research, all the design, all the testing and the build of the car with schools, colleges and universities throughout the United Kingdom. How did this project come about? Well, it came about because uh, we heard that the Americans were hoping to design a car to attempt uh, to regain the world land speed record. But rather than just build a car this time, uh, we decided that we would run it with an education program. We have a huge problem in the United Kingdom, and it's a very much a developed world problem, that not enough young people enjoy maths and science and we're able to share all the math, science and technology with young people throughout the United Kingdom. My name is David Gorn, I'm the Sales and Marketing Director for Protocol National. We're the UK's largest supplier of um, services, temporary services, lecturers, assessors, interims, principals to the FE, sec to the FE sector. Um, and I spoke to Richard um, some time ago, it, it, the idea caught my imagination. He's doing a, a project Bloodhound which um, energizes children, learners and students across at all ages to become engineers, scientists, technologists, mathematicians. So absolutely fabulous. I have 2.2 million hours a year I deliver of teaching. 10% um, of that is actually STEM subjects, so that's quite dear to our heart. I have 230 colleges which we visit on a regular basis, so Richard was very keen for us to be able to go into the colleges and, and promote the service because he hasn't got, it's a small team, it's very energised, very energetic, a tremendous um, achievement so far. And if they can achieve the, the 1,000 miles per hour, they will have encouraged tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of, of UK and students globally. Right, well we decided that we wouldn't uh, come up with new initiatives. The strategy has been to work with current STEM deliverers right from primary schools through to universities and also the current networks that are out there but to give them the additional visibility of Bloodhound which we will have for the next three or four years. So we're working with primary engineering primary schools, Formula One in schools, Green Power Challenge, Young Engineers Clubs, small piece residential courses, engineering development trust and also we're developing a whole range of curriculum resource materials again right from key stage one through to undergraduate courses in universities. And what does this give to UK PLC? Well bottom line is we need to have more scientists and engineers to overcome the problems that we face globally and the only way we can do that is to excite young people in their science and maths. So actually giving them this information so that they can study it in uh, their school classrooms uh, we think will give us more scientists and engineers. It's a bit like the Apollo effect that uh, was noticed in the 1960s with the moonshots. Uh, uh, more people went off to do physics courses and uh, physics PhDs and okay we might not be able to afford the uh, many billions of dollars that were spent then but certainly we think this is good value and it's being sub supported by the DCSF and the uh, BIS uh, government departments to uh, show exactly where science, maths and technology come together to give us this iconic uh, engineering car. And how can educational establishments get involved? Very simply, we want all schools and colleges throughout the UK involved and the best way is to go to the website www.bloodhoundssc.com and just register online. It's free to register. We will send out information, uh, posters to the schools and colleges and also they can download the education materials. Also we want it to be a partnership so we want colleges to work with us to develop curriculum resource materials. Everything about Bloodhound is there for, to share. We are the engineering experts. We want to work with the colleges who are the education experts. Our involvement in this, in this project is to act as a gatekeeper for, the, for this project. It's a small team, limited resources, the money is being spent on the car to make sure, and the educational learning materials. We're allowing uh, Richard and his team access to all those colleges that we have through our sales teams, through our telemarketing, through our marketing. We've developed specific marketing materials for this. Um, and we'll be involved in sponsoring um, the project over the next two years.
and many of my principals that have been here today have been delighted by the relevancy of this, the fact that it is about STEM and it's about FE and it's, there's probably not a better cause at the moment. My name's Richard Noble and I'm the project director of Blundheim Project. How did you get involved? Well, we've been doing the land speed record for some time. <laughs> I first did it in uh, 1983 and we got the world record then at 633 miles an hour. Uh, then there was a bit of a battle because both the Americans and the McLaren Formula One team wanted to do the, the first ever supersonic uh, and we decided we were going to take them on. We weren't going to let that lot buy, buy the land speed record. And funny enough, we came up top, which is brilliant. So we were the first ever through the sound barrier. We pushed on after that to do the uh, JCB Diesel Max, which is the first ever, the fastest ever diesel car. And then uh, it looked as though the Americans were going to challenge the thrust SSC supersonic record. So we thought, Andy Green and I thought we'd better defend it. And uh, so we had this extraordinary meeting with uh, Lord Drayson, who was then the minister responsible for the MOD. And our job was to try and separate him from uh, an EJ200, which is the jet engine you see behind us. And uh, he said, there's something you can do for us. So I said, of course, what, 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 what can we do? And he said, we've got a real problem, shortage of engineers. But he said, during the last century, we didn't have that sort of problem. And the reason why was we had this fantastic aerospace industry, which was creating things like the Vulcan bomber and the Concorde, the TSR-2, the Lightning, Ferry Delta-2, all these amazing products. And of course, all the kids of my age were absolutely obsessed with these. We all wanted to be engineers and pilots. And so Drayson said, that's where we want to get back to. So we want you to go and do an iconic engineering project and run it through all the schools. He said, and I'm not giving you any money. <laughs> so I said, a terrific challenge. So I said, fine, we'll go and do that. Then after we started all the research, we started to find that there was a real problem in terms of the engineer supply. I mean, really serious problems. And not only that, we also found that what the schools needed and the colleges needed more than anything else was um, stimulation, a stimulating product. You see, the fundamental thing is that the, um, the kids, the students, the learners today, um, basically they live in a world where there's intense, absolute intense stimulation. So whether it might be video games or music or television, everything's bang, bang, bang in your face, you know? except when you're in college, <laughs> right? So we need something to kind of uh, level things up. So you need a stimulating project which can be linked into the education. And we've just signed with the Intel Corporation and they have uh, uh, a global education program called School. And they realized the same thing, that they need that, uh, you know, they would do much better if basically they could attach School to a really interesting stimulating project. So then we realized that this is how this thing could be done. And then there's one more twist to it, which is absolutely fascinating, because the only way you can make this thing really stimulating is to make all the data available. So basically, the kids can start looking at things like the weight of the car, the position of the center of gravity, the, uh, the stressing on the wheels, for instance, the vehicle dynamics, how to make it stable, um, uh, the center of pressure, all these sort of variables. And they can start to understand how all these things connect up and how one influences the other and, and so on. So you really get into the project. And we realized then we were the only people who can do this because basically the defense industry can't uh, because everything's secret. The space industry can't. As NASA says, uh, a lot of uh, uh, their product, uh, all their information has to go through their secrets committee and, uh, and you know, that all gets withheld. And, uh, of course, the Formula One and NASCAR car race people are, are absolutely hopeless because they, they live in a world of complete and utter secrecy, so they can't share every, anything. But the land speed record is different because the rules state that the car must have uh, four or more wheels and be driven by the driver and sort of stay on the ground. So that's really it. That being the case, uh, land speed record cars tend to be all different and therefore the technology from one doesn't transfer to another one. So you suddenly realize this is the only way, this is the only product, exciting product, where you can make the data available uniquely, um, literally as it happens. So very shortly we'll be putting out all the data on the design of the car, how it was designed, how it was worked out, and then when we start running the car, we'll be putting out all the data on uh, the runs. So, for instance, all the data that comes pouring off the car, and there'll be some 250 data channels on board, that all goes up on the web. Of course, it goes to our engineers as well, but it goes up on the web. And that means that schools all over the country can start getting into it and colleges can get into it and start saying, hey, they got that wrong and oh, I'm not sure about that, etc. So they really get involved in it. It's unique. Nobody's ever done anything like this before. Um, there's no precedent, so consequently, it's a, it's a pretty good battle, and uh, you know we've got to innovate all the way down the line. <laughs>